Today we're going to talk about sequences, which is just putting one thing in front of the other, but thankfully we can automate this to do a whole lot of things in a row and actually make some cool stuff. Kind of like this. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, so before we begin, I want to acknowledge two things. One, sometimes I talk fast, and in this tutorial it's really important that you keep track of the sequence of events, so I'm going to try to talk slower than normal, taking breaks between each statement. And the second thing is that I'm aware that there are scripts out there that can help you accomplish these similar effects. This is not about scripts. This is about how to do these things from the fundamental level so you don't have to lean on scripts. Now I know scripts save you time, blah blah blah, blah who cares? The point of this is for you to understand what's happening in the program and to know internally how to create this motion. It's not so much how to do things quickest from point A to point B. Sometimes it helps if you actually know what the script is doing and why it's doing that. So with those two things out of the way, let's uh, sequence some layers. First thing I want to do is create something to sequence. So I'm going to make a new composition. I don't care about any of the details of it. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to create the rectangles. So first thing I want to do is make a new solid and uh, we can make it, you know, whatever color floats your boat. Okay, and this solid is just going to be the background, so background, just like that. Now I'm going to create a new shape layer, and I like shape layers, they're some of my favorite layers, and I'm going to add to this a rectangle, and this rectangle, the size of the rectangle, let me just unlink those, is going to be 1920 uh, divided by 8, and it's going to be by uh, 1080 high. So you see what I did there? I just put in a bit of math and then it created uh, the number 240 out of 1920 divided by 8, which is my frame width divided by 8. So pretty good, right? That's smart stuff. Now I'm going to add a fill to this. All right, and that fill color, I don't really know what color to make it. Let's go with a yellow. Let's desaturate that yellow. Okay, cool. So blue and yellow. This is like some country's flag, I can't remember what country. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna mess with this thing's scale, super simple. So I hit Y to bring up the pan behind, I'm gonna move the anchor point down, hold down Command while I do it, it's gonna snap to the bottom center, perfect, good stuff. Now I'm gonna take this layer and Command move it over here to the side, I'm gonna call up this layer's scale by hitting S, I'm gonna unlink them, and then this one's the horizontal, this one's the vertical. It's going to start at a vertical scale of zero. Set keyframe for that. Move ahead 20 frames. I held down shift and hit page down twice to get there. Now I'm going to put this up at 100. So we're animating from zero up to 100. Perfectly good, perfectly boring animation. Great. Now I'm going to make a copy of this, one copy. I'm going to drag it, clicking down close to this corner, holding down Command so it snaps, and snap there. Duplicate it, move it. Duplicate it, move it. Duplicate it, move it. And we're going to repeat this until you've filled up the whole thing with these delightful rectangles. Duplicate it and move it. Okay, good. So all of these things are going at the same time. We don't want that. We want to sequence them. So. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the layers that we want to sequence. I'm going to put the playhead at the beginning. So the playhead goes to the start. That's the start of the first keyframe, frame 0, 0. Hold down Alt, then hit the right square bracket. Okay, so we're going to zoom in and see what we've got. We have trimmed all of the layers to be only one frame long. So that's what trimming them does. We've taken basically the end here and we've trimmed it to be there. Your keyboard shortcut may not be Alt and then the right square bracket. It might be something else depending on the language of your keyboard or the layout of your keyboard. But basically what you're doing is you are just trimming the end. So you might have to move it manually, whatever. Now, the next thing to do is to select them starting from the bottom, holding down Shift, going to the top. So again, select the bottom, hold down Shift, go to the top. This means that it's technically selecting 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, then 8. And the importance of me saying this is because when we go Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Sequence Layers, hit OK. It's going to move them to be in that order, 1, then 2, then 3. Okay. So if I go 
one, holding down control, and then three, five, six, eight, two, whatever, like this. Now I go animation, sequence layers, okay. It creates this sequence. So they're still in a sequence, but it's a weird sequence. It will sequence them in the order you selected them. If you go from eight down to one, and go animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, that's the result you get. So, remember, it's going to sequence them in the order you selected them, and you choose the selection by holding shift first and then last. So, we've created this line, which you can't see anything happening because each of these is only the first frame. So, I'm going to zoom back out and go to the end, hold down alt, hit that trim button again, which means we are trimming, setting the end point of that layer at the end. So now it's like that, and these look like stairs. And they look like this, exactly like stairs. So right now, this is one method of sequencing. It is an even space in between all of them. So if instead we trimmed them to be two frames long, there'd be a two frame gap between each of them, right? Now, if instead we don't want a straight stagger like this, we want maybe an exponential stagger or something like that. You're putting the playhead here at the endpoint of the last layer. Okay, select all of those, pull down Alt, set the end. So this is the end here. See how it makes a sort of pyramid shape. Now, the order you select these is important. Do you want it to go fast and then slow? Do you want it to go slow and then fast? So, we go from one up to eight, meaning the thickest to the thinnest, then we go animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers again. Okay. So this sticks them one after the other, matching the in point to the frame after the out point, and has created this kind of a look. Now again, you go to the end, select the layers, you trim the end to be at the very end. Now what does that look like? One, do, 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 just like this. So, so far so good. So these are the two ways that I showed in the intro of sequencing layers to be linear or exponential. If you want to reverse this, have it go fast to slow, so larger gaps at the end, shorter gaps at the start, you just select them in the reverse order. Okay, all this is really great, but it's not really helping us because it still looks pretty boring. We're going to select all these keyframes, and we could have done this at the beginning, so do this whenever you feel like, but we go in to the keyframe graph editor here, we're going to alter them by clicking this button here, which is easy ease, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag the handles, all of the handles, to have this shape by dragging the end handle to have 100% influence. And there you go. So this is boop, like so. Very super interesting stuff. So that's one method. If we look here, we can see that all of these keyframes have the same distance between them. So these are all operating sort of at the same speed, which is all right, I suppose. But what if we want them all to go at a faster speed? What if we want them all to end at the same time? Well, then we would have to drag all the keyframes here to have them all finish their run at the same time. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of shortcuts for the moving of keyframes around. It's the moving of layers, but moving of keyframes, not so much. So by altering that, you can see how that's changed the way things look. Okay, pretty interesting there. Some other things you can do is take all of the layers and set their trim in and out to be for the whole thing and then you can grab these layers, hold down Alt, and then squish them like this. So we, you can just squish that up. Holding down Alt while selecting many keyframes and then clicking and dragging will stretch the entire group of keyframes. So let's say you want this to animate on in a mere 20 frames. Well, you can do that by holding down Alt and then dragging so that the whole thing only takes a few keyframes. So it's all quite well and good. And that is 
one way of sequencing these. Certainly, it's just as good as any other way. If you need to manually move the keyframes around, just click and drag them so we can move them into like a pyramidal stack. And this is the hard way of doing it. You saw before we sequenced the layers and this took no time at all. It was two clicks or it can be eight clicks. It can be however many clicks you feel it needs to be. But this is just showing you that the shape of these keyframes and the shape of their graph is what will determine the speed and acceleration and all of the stuff of the layer's motion. And that you can tell by observing the keyframes and observing the graph how that sequence is going to be animating. But remember, like I said before, some of the key things about the sequence is animation, keyframe assistant, and then sequence layers, it sticks them end to end in the order you selected them. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, the sky is the limit. Sequence whatever you'd like. Sequence a bunch of things. You can sequence compositions. You can sequence things without keyframes. If you want to sequence things, just make sure that they're, you know, laid out in a nice way and that you're doing most of your work. Anything you need to duplicate, make sure you do all of that first and then duplicate it. But, you know, other than that, I think that's the only advice I really have on the subject. So one thing that I will show you here real quick before we go is how I did the text staying the same. So the text was always on, it was just changing color. I just pre-composed this, uh, which is great. Call that pre-comp whatever. I created some text. Um, text. You know, whatever that is. Let's say it's black text. Um, let's stick it in the center. Doop doop. Okay, so there's one behind, I duplicate it, then I duplicate this sort of transitional element, and then I set it to have track mat of this, and then go like this. So, the text is one color, and then at the same time as one is coming on, the other is altering this text to come above. So that's just how I did the text of that, in case you were wondering, it could be fun. But uh, I would say experiment and use this on rotated elements, use them on circular elements, use them on things bursting out of stuff, use them on things cascading across. Uh, the cascade is really one of the, the big things that this is used for. And when I say cascade, I mean this kind of shape, okay? This kind of pyramidal shape, either linear or exponential, and uh, that's about it. Hopefully this has been helpful to teach you a little bit about sequencing layers. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy learning about motion graphics and After Effects, then subscribe to this channel. There's a new tutorial or something every week, and sometimes there are Google Hangouts and all sorts of stuff, so you should definitely subscribe to the channel because it is a great resource for learning After Effects and any kind of motion graphics, visual effects work you intend to do. Uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, leave them in the comments. That would be great, and then I will answer them about this. And if you have questions about other things, hit me up on Twitter at EC. Abrams. Uh, enjoy the Google Plus page and the Facebook page and all that stuff. Links in the description. Check out evanabrams.com if you want to get some templates or the project file for this thing. Anyway, that's about it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.